Hello everybody, quick announcement before we hop into the video. If we're not there yet, we are getting really, really close to monetization, which means you might start seeing ads on my videos soon. Content's not changing. Hopefully I'm only changing in a good way. It just means that we've reached the milestone where YouTube has, has deemed me a creator that is able to be paid, which is really nice because I don't have a job and I am going to be $240,000 in debt before I graduate medical school. So I'm mostly just here to say thank you for, for watching videos and for giving me the time and energy of your life when I know you could be spending it lots of other ways. So I'm glad you're here and I hope that you enjoy this video. Hello everybody and welcome back. If you're new here, my name is Alex. I am a first year medical student at Vanderbilt University School of Medicine. And today I'm coming at you from a new location. I put up some rope lights around my mirror and now it's just like, I can record at night. I don't have to wait for the sun to shine perfectly, um, which is nice because the sun sets at like 4.30, but it's 80 degrees out. I'm just very confused. The South is quite confusing. I guess I'm glad it's not freezing. I don't know. So in today's video, I put up a poll a little while ago asking what you guys wanted to see. And I didn't realize that vlogs were like the most popular among you. I feel like for me, it's just like my everyday stuff and it's not very exciting because I literally study all the time but you guys seem to like it, so I will keep bringing you vlogs, but quite a large percentage of you wanted to see how I studied on my iPad and how I used my iPad as a study tool for medical school. So in this video, I am just going to introduce you to my iPad and kind of what I've been using so far. I did just get it like a month or two ago, maybe a month and a half ago. So I'm not super like, <laughs> I'm not an expert on this, but in the most user-friendly way, I have been using it and it has been like super helpful for me or at least more fun than just uh, writing on paper. So I will take you through the apps that I'm using and how I go about doing note taking. Again, this is not exhaustive. There's lots of apps that I don't have and that other people do. So be sure to check out other people's videos as well if you're looking for an exhaustive list. But we'll talk about what apps I use and then also kind of how I go about using them to be the most effective. So. Let us get started, shall we? Okay, to start, I will kind of tell you what what iPad I have. So I have the 10, 10.2 inch one, not the fancy one, just the regular old iPad. This one I got with extra storage, so it would have been like $100 cheaper if I would have got like smaller gigabytes, but I got more because I realized that I would be downloading a ton of PowerPoints onto my iPad and I didn't want to run out of storage because that would be very unfortunate and annoying because I have 15,000 unread emails and I know myself well enough to know I'm not going to delete PowerPoints off of my iPad in a regular occurrence. So I need more storage. I just facilitate that and get rid of that stress before it even happens. So I have tons of storage on here. Um, I do have a case. I wanted to get a pretty case because I'm extra, you know me. I do wish I had the little pencil thing on here. So far, I've just been carrying my Apple Pencil in my pencil pouch with all of my actual pens, but it would be nice to have a strap on here. So if you're looking into getting a case, that's something to consider. But so far it's worked fine for me. I got, I think just the, like the first generation Apple Pencil. I didn't get the newest one. This one was like $99 and it works perfectly fine. You just plug it in to your iPad to charge it and it's very convenient, works really well. So overall I spent probably like 500 to $550. The, the iPad itself was like 430 the case was like 15 and then the pencil was like 100. So probably around five five to $600. And my personal budget a month is $150. So I'm still recovering from this purchase, but it's been, it's been absolutely worth it. Without further ado, I'm gonna crack into the apps that I use. The thing that I use the most commonly is Notability, which is an app that you do have to pay for. I will put the subscription information in the description and maybe on the screen here. I don't remember how much it costs. I think it's like eight dollars but honestly I prefer it to the free app so I've used whiteboard and I just think that notability is superior in many ways and one of the features I really like about it is you can change the paper that you use and so instead of it just being like a vast open white space I like to put the dotted paper on there because I love bullet journaling and it just is reminiscent of bullet journaling and helps me stay organized while I am writing my notes very very compatible with 
sharing your screen on Zoom. If you have Zoom on your iPad, I know right now that's really common with COVID, but if <laughs> Zoom University isn't very popular in like a year and you're watching this and you're like, what are you talking about, you crazy person? It's just because right now we're uh, virtual. Notability is really great for sharing your screen. There's not a ton of lag. I feel like the whiteboard part of Zoom where you can write while you're in Zoom lags a ton. I just think Notability is superior in that way as well. It also exports directly to Google Drive, which I have found to be super helpful if you have like shared folders, which a lot of med students do. It's really easy to take notes um, for like a group session and then upload them or to draw a figure or to do something like that and upload them to like a shared drive or just back them up on your own Google Drive. It's very seamless. So another thing I really like about Notability is it's very, very user friendly um, and I like that I can personalize my notes. I love doodling, I love drawing and I think um, Notability is the best of both worlds in that I can take my notes but also I am able to like illustrate them which I could do on paper but it's a little bit easier to make mistakes on notability and go back and erase them and start over. Another thing I think this has really been the main difference between using the iPad versus just writing on paper notes is I download the PowerPoints that we are using for lectures directly to notability. You can export PDFs directly into the app and so I, I can do that with PowerPoints, I can do that with research papers that we're using, with ebooks, all of it goes to Notability. I can annotate it directly from there. Super, super helpful. It's been my absolutely most used app on my, my iPad. When I get my screen time report, it's like, you've spent five hours on your iPad today and four hours and 35 minutes of that was Notability. The other 25 minutes was me getting the PowerPoints so that I could use Notability. So um, it's, been, it's been really, really great. But what I really like about that is you have the option to swipe and you can see your most current, most recent notes that you've had open in Notability. And so while you're taking notes about lecture material and synthesizing those, you can have the lecture and switch back and forth very seamlessly. It makes it really easy to look things up. You can also keyword search, which is super awesome. I think there is the premium, premium version of Notability where you can search your own handwriting. I don't have that version, but I would like to have it. Honestly, it's really, really nice to be able to, to search a term really fast, pull it up and be like, oh, I found it right here. Like this is, I think this is what we're looking for. I think this is the key point about this case. That's the most important. Like if I'm like, oh, I forget what polycythemia vera is. Like I can look that up really fast and then I can like synthesize that information. I just think it's nice to have everything in the same place, which was something I was missing before with my paper notes. I didn't, it wasn't as organized as I can do it on Notability. You can also put all of your notes in folders, you can title all of your notes, you can date all of your notes, very, very easy. And if you're a person who likes to record lectures, I know a lot of lectures nowadays are recorded, but if you're ever in a session and you want to record the notes, the audio, you can do that while you're taking notes. And if it's helpful for you, you can watch the playback of your notes with the audio. So you can see what you were writing down as the professor was saying it, which I feel like for some people, is really really helpful. I don't currently do that because all of our lectures are recorded and it's very rarely that I'm in a session where <laughs> it's not recorded and I can't just go back and see. But I do know classmates who do that and you can watch it on double speed back which is really helpful. So I think that is a really really cool feature. I regret to say it as well, I've also switched my bullet journal to Notability and I I, I'm struggling with that decision. I feel like there's something about a paper bullet journal that is a little bit classic and I can't give it up, but it is nice to have everything in the same place. So it's possible that in the future I might do both or use my bullet journal more for like goals and things other than just like my normal agenda. Very, very easy to keep track of things when everything is in the same place. So those are really just the apps that I use. And so I'll go ahead and show you kind of how I take notes and I'll pull up I'll pull up some notes so that you can view them while I'm talking about them. It might be that I don't look the same as this while I am narrating the rest of these notes just because time constraints <laughs> and making sure that I can explain it well to you. So I'm really, really excited to share my notes with you and I am excited to like hopefully impact your studying. If you're an undergrad and you are looking into getting
using an iPad for med school. First, I would I would look and see if your med school gives you one. I know like some schools in their welcome package do give students some resources like that. That unfortunately is not the case for Vanderbilt. There are other things that Vanderbilt's really great at that an iPad could not replace, but um, an iPad would have been nice from the school, I'm just saying. So look that up, but I would absolutely recommend. I think if you're someone who's like, I can't be convinced, I love paper notes, this is something that I've really, really, really enjoyed. And I think it's, somebody commented a couple months ago, maybe that the iPad like significantly improved their productivity. And I think, I think that's true. I think it's easy to get distracted when you're switching back and forth between mediums and, and just using the same the same technological medium throughout makes it really easy to be like, I'm here, I'm studying here, I'm not distracted by email, I'm not distracted by this all in one spot. Another thing that I do with my iPad, my notifications are turned off. I'm not receiving, I'm not receiving your messages while I'm studying on my iPad. I do not have access to my email on my iPad. I do, I'm not logged into anything on my iPad because it is for studying. Um, I don't have fun apps. I don't have distractions downloaded. So it really is like, if I am using this, I am studying. I am doing something productive. And I think, I think I'm gonna try to keep it that way. It's been really, really nice. So I would absolutely recommend. If you use an iPad currently and you have app recommendations for me, remember I am new. I am new to the iPad, so I would love to um, have your recommendations and I would love to try out anything that you would recommend. So let me show you my notes. Okay, so to start, I just wanted to give you like a general tour of my notability. So you can see uh, we're in the block homeostasis, so I'm going to go ahead and choose week three and I'll show you my review document, which I'll talk a little bit more about coming up, but I like to synthesize all the information from the week into a large document. So this one is about 30 pages and I'm not quite done with it. I'm a little bit behind, um, but this is an example of kind of what my notes look like. And I know that like at this point, it's probably not helpful just to look at them, but you can see there's lots of diagrams, there's lots of highlighting. Drawing things out is really, really helpful for me to visualize things, especially with anatomy. You can see veins and arteries of the heart, having pictures of textbooks, having pictures from lecture. It's very, very helpful for me to have those in my notes. And then also I do love doodling and I think notability is really fun for that as well. You can see kind of the variety of learning styles that are in my notes. And now I'll talk a little bit more in detail about how I go about making these documents. Okay, so I am going to begin studying and reviewing for this week. And so I kind of wanted to go over how I studied. And I've talked about this a little bit, but I've never shown you um, while I'm doing it. So so every week I make what's called my review document. So you can see up here at the top, it's called week four review. And I started it on November 9th. And so basically what this document serves a purpose as is I will go through the PowerPoints while we're in lecture and I, I won't be working on this review document, but then afterwards I go through the PowerPoints again. So that's my second pass with the information. And then I will add the information to this document. And so um, basically right now I am working on um, an hour and a half of synthesizing information. I tend to get a little bit behind just because this process does take quite a bit of time, but I, I like to do this because I think that it's really helpful in synthesizing information and understanding it. And if I can draw it, I can understand it. And so that's sort of my rationale for spending so much time on these. Okay. So I'm just showing you the process of me taking notes at this point. So I'm working on my review document kind of like in real speed and you'll see me switch back and forth between the review document, which is me writing down the stuff that I know or writing down the stuff that I just studied to kind of put it in my head um, and then I'll switch back to the lecture notes so that I can review the information and make sure that I have it right. Sort of the way that I take notes is very similar to how I did an undergrad and I have a separate video on that so it's pretty simple and I can link that video down below but the process of that is the same in on paper as it is on the iPad so here you just see me uh, with the the notes and, and I'm kind of taking my time because this stuff is a little bit complicated, but um, reading the notes and then synthesizing the information and making sure that I can understand it. So you'll probably see me draw at some point, but um, I'll let you enjoy the time lapse.
Another thing you'll see me do and something I really love about Notability is that you can take images directly from kind of whatever you want to and paste them into your notes. So you can see that I just copied an EKG into my notes and now I can annotate it, draw over it, and I think this is really, really great practice and it helps me visualize things a lot better because sometimes you can just look at images, um, but it's a lot easier to make sense of them when you can manipulate that as well. Everybody, thank you so much for tuning in and for those of you who upvoted this on the poll thank you so much for um, participating that was the first one that I'd ever posted and a lot of you voted on it which was awesome if we haven't quite gotten there yet we are so so close to monetization which if you're not like familiar with the YouTube process you need 1,000 subscribers and 4,000 watch hours per calendar year to get monetized which means you might start seeing ads on my videos pretty soon and it's not because I'm selfish it's because I'm poor it's like a huge accomplishment and it's been a goal of mine for a long time to get to the milestone of being monetized so thank you if we're not there yet or if you have seen an ad on this video thank you for watching them the more you watch them the more like sense I might get and maybe the more gas I can buy <laughs> uh, regardless of the money regardless of if you skip through those ads like thank you for being here and for your support and for watching this video and I hope you're doing well and I will see you next time Bye.